backwards. Guess what? It works exactly like forwards, but now it's going to make our robot move backwards, conveniently enough. It uses the same quantity, unit type, and speed parameters. So that's great because we build consistency between our commands. So you can actually just sort of um, switch forward and backwards, being able to go through and actually have your robot move forward and then move backwards using the same sort of commands and language. So it really kind of helps out uh, for all of the different commands that, that are available. So let's take a look at some examples. And you'll see these examples are very familiar. Uh, basically the same concept. You can use the parameters, you have the defaults, you're able to kind of go through and, uh, and use these. So let's take a look at my desktop one more time. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in a backwards command. And now we'll go ahead and change quantity to 2.0, rotations for speed 50. And let's just check and we'll change this to 720 degrees. So now we've got our forwards, our backwards, uh, and we're all set here. I just cleaned out some extra spaces. They weren't needed. They didn't, didn't do us any harm either. I'm just a uh, force of habit. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and hit Robot, Compile and Download. We're going to send our new program over. And then if you will uh, give me just a quick second, I'm going to switch back over to our video camera computer. <laughs> Sorry, I, I wish my webcam was working, but for some reason it decided to, uh, to, to give me some hassles. And so this is the easiest way to get them running. All right, so let's go ahead and slide this down. So there's our robot on our nice little VexIQ field area. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit start. Make sure that my cable isn't going to get stuck. And now we're moving forward for two rotations. We come to a stop and now we go backwards for two rotations. And you can see we ended up exactly or roughly exactly where we started. So another nice thing that I've done as well, I don't know if it'll come through on the video, but I have an I have a marking of yellow tape on the uh, on the robot's wheels. And so I'm gonna go ahead and hit start again. And we should see that it will go forward for approximately two rotations. Oh, well, it looks like uh, it slipped a little bit there or actually my, my USB cable pulled it. So our experiment almost worked. But you can see that we can go back and forth in order to try our programs over and over again. So let's go ahead and we'll just try it one more time. Let me reset my wheels so that my robot will uh, travel the, uh, and everything's lined up. And make sure my cable's not gonna get in the way. And now the robot's going to move. And you can see that those two little yellow tape lines they pretty much in sync exactly, and they ended up where they should have at the end. Uh, so what's great about that is that, you know, there's also some nice code built into these motors to make sure that they run at a very predictable and reliable speed. All right, and so now we're back. So any questions on forwards and backwards? How would you run the program on the robot without the cord attached? Ah, that's a great question. Uh, so if we, uh, if, <laughs> you'll allow me to switch back to our uh, video feed. So you'll see here that on the robot itself, I'm gonna go ahead and try and kill my light so that it will try and focus on my screen. The backlit screen's actually uh, causing more difficulties. So on the, on the screen itself, if your program will be listed and you can just hit the check mark, and that will cause the program to start, and then you can hit the X that will cause your program to stop. And what we'll do is we'll take a look inside of Robot C at the menus, but there's a menu system that will basically, you can choose that we're running an autonomous program. And then from our autonomous program, we've got our moving forward program loaded as well. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to get it to focus, but that's not gonna work either. All right. So let's switch over to our remote desktop, which, which is nice, but we're gonna use our buttons on our, on our Bex IQ. And basically you're going to see a menu inside of the Bex IQ that looks like this. 
and it's going to say auto programs and moving forward. And then when you hit the little check mark, your program will start running and it now moves and says moving forward. And then once your program's done, it's going to come back and it's going to list your, auto, your autonomous programs that are available right now. And so if you downloaded multiple programs, you'd be able to use the up and down arrow in order to navigate. So you can store a bunch of programs onto the VEX IQ and be able to switch between them uh, and run them. And you basically just use the menuing system that's built onto the brick. Did that answer our question?